Hi, I'm John Block and I'm executive producer at 4A Games. So uh, Metro Exodus is the third installment in, uh, in the game series uh, of, of Metro. Um, and the previous Metro games took place nearly exclusively underground in the Moscow Metro system, venturing above ground very rarely. Um, and uh, so it was very uh, uh, kind of uh, you know, a small area that, that these games took place in. Um, in Metro Exodus, we're kind of turning that on its head and we're taking the player completely outside of the uh, Moscow area and taking them on a year-long journey across Russia, across the continent. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll see lots of different uh, environments along the way, different seasons, uh, different weather. Uh, there's a day-night cycle uh, the players need to worry about and these big open areas are, are one of the major you know changes to this series one of the major additions uh, where previously the games were more uh, uh, linear story driven crafted experiences um, uh, where Metro Exodus brings to the table these new sandbox environments we're still uh, retaining that uh, story driven feel and there are there, there will still be those classic linear you know, levels that Metro fans uh, know and love from the previous games, but we're kind of mixing it in with these with these big open environments. So the player's going to weave in between both types of, uh, you know, the classic gameplay and this new kind of hybrid gameplay that we've come up with. So that, that was one thing that was really important to us, uh, making sure that we still retained the things that were important about Metro as a series and the things that you know, fans come to expect when they see, you know, a Metro game is coming. Um, and it took us quite a while to find that mixture um, of bringing these open environments with a lot more freedom and a lot more uh, open space to the mix of that, you know, claustrophobic, uh, really immersive, atmospheric feel of, of classic Metro. And it took us nearly two years to find that formula um, to start building what we have today. Um, and it's, it's kind of a mix of being out in the open and having places that you can go where you have these little snippet experiences that are reminiscent of that classic, uh, you know, Metro gameplay. Um, but even when you're, when you're out in, in those open areas, there's still this, this feeling of danger in the environment, this feeling of, I don't really know what's around that corner, hiding behind that, that blown out car or, you know, even behind that bush. So it, there's still this kind of um, anxiety that the, that the player has when, when moving around these environments. You don't just run through without, you know, caring about things. You're just, you know, still slowly moving through, checking corners, you know. Also, you're, you're investigating for, uh, uh, for finding resources and um, ammunition, just like you used to, uh, to have to do in, in, in previous Metro games as well. That kind of um, survival uh, gameplay is back. Um, and uh, we've kind of evolved it a little bit in these open areas in something we call the, the sandbox survival. Um, so I think that that's something that still kind of holds holds some of that classic metro feel together in, in these in these more open environments. The 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 overarching story of the entire game is still uh, linear in the sense that you, you you progress through it. There's a there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to the story. Um, you progress through it over the course of the entire game. Um, in these open areas, though, there's the core narrative thread that carries the the player through as as before. But this time, the player can step off that rail any time that they want and uh, explore around in the area and find all the, the many hours of, of, uh, of side content that we have available for players in, in these open environments and step back on uh, that, you know, that narrative thread to, to continue on with, uh, with the main story. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to give too many spoilers, uh, but um, uh, obviously Anna is back. Um, and uh, so is Miller, uh, some of the returning characters. There are some new characters and some returning characters. Um, and they're all together on this train and taking this journey together. Um, and the player will have the opportunity to meet all of them and learn so much information about all of them 
uh, you know, the, the, the depth of story and uh, the, the narrative and the dialogue and everything uh, is, is something that's core to Metro as well. And we've really, we've brought it back, but we've also ramped it up to, the, to, to another level on this one. Our script is actually twice the size of Metro 2033, Metro Last Light, and all the DLC combined. <laughs> so there's a lot more to learn about all these people. I mean, in, in general, because you're going on this train with, all, with these characters, there's a lot more characters surrounding our team this time around than ever has been. It Normally, like it's only been like a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, you, you definitely get that, especially over the progression of, uh, of the game. Uh, you know, one of the objectives in this level that we're showing off today is our team needs to go and find a, uh, a passenger car to attach to the back of the train. And it's something that um, that's kind of... Uh, you know, a, a, a part of the, the story as well. There is a bit of a progression to the to the train itself as well. Um, uh, you know, you, you you saved in the in the beginning of this level. You you, you try to save uh, the um, the mother and and her child. There's other survivors like that that you'll meet along the way that maybe want to come with you. And uh, so there's a progression of the group and a progression of of that train. And within that, it's the train is their home. And you know, within that tiny home, there's all these people living together, and it, it's, um, it, it, it's a tight-knit group. Well, I mean, one of the major ways is, is you know, you, so you add that, that passenger carrier, and, there, and there's other uh, cars to the train. Um, if you watch uh, uh, last year's uh, um, announcement trailer from E3, you might see a couple more hints as to what might be added to the train because I don't think it was the basic uh, the basic model of the train that we used in, in the trailer. So, so I think in the in the previous Metro games, because everything was more crafted, we knew what the player was going to experience next. So we could um, design a level to where there was you know a trader before some big uh, encounter where we thought maybe the player would want to switch their weapons up in a certain way because you know maybe there was a lot more close quarters combat and so we'd give the trader you know a shotgun and kind of entice the player to maybe maybe swap out for it um, because we felt you know maybe a sniper rifle in this next encounter isn't going to be the the best idea <coughs> um, and that works for a very linear experience but once you open things up like we have uh, with these big sandbox levels the player is in, in control of that and, and should be right so Adding things like the workbench and the backpack allow the player to customize their loadout and strategize ahead of going into a situation or even in the middle of a situation. You know, just plop the backpack down and swap out, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a you know, silenced barrel for a long barrel or, you know, a widespread barrel on the shotgun, something like that. Um, you know, take that scope off if you're going into close quarters. Um, so it, it, it allows uh, players a lot more freedom of choice and to be able to play not only the way that they normally like to play, but you know, if they're stealthing through uh, you know, with their silenced weaponry that's you know, maybe a little bit less powerful and they screw up, just you know, take that, that, that second in, in cover to you know, switch back to a more assault-oriented uh, um, uh, uh, loadout and uh, you know, take on the enemies from there. So it, it's, it, it gives players a lot more uh, uh, freedom to, to, to play exactly how they want to play and adjust to how the game is changing around them. There's always been a little bit of that kind of gritty functionality to, uh, to, to the weapons, especially the, the, um, the cobbled together ones, where you know, some of them, uh, especially the, you know, the, the classic bastard gun, would always uh, overheat if you kept, fu you know, putting, putting rounds through it, you know. Um, and uh, <coughs> so, so there's been elements of this in, in previous Metro games, but we wanted to make it more of a, um, a mechanic this time around. So uh, if you go into a dirty area, if you get into water, um, you know, if there's, uh, you know, a storm or something like that, um, and just over time, the, the weapons will develop dirt and grime on them, and so you can actually see it on the weapon while you're playing. You can see it when you bring the weapon into the workbench. So you're going to have to clean them and, and, and maintain them. Uh, if you don't, then the performance of the weapon reduces over time uh, with, with this you know, dirt buildup. Um, and also jams and, and, and overheating will, will, will happen a lot more often. So maintaining your weapons are really, really important this time around. 
so so the the two ways you can uh, customize your loadout and deal with your inventory and, and and your items is the workbench and the backpack. The workbench is found in these uh, kind of safe areas, like a like a safe house. Um, the player can can manage their inventory and also sleep to advance the day night cycle. Um, but uh, the workbench allows you to do the full suite of customization. You can customize your uh, your armor uh, and your gear. You know the the gadgets on your on your wrist bracer. Um, you can uh, customize the weapons in, in in any way that you want. You know, swapping out those uh, um, those modifications or or adding attachments. You can craft ammunition. You can craft uh, any any of the items the other items that you might need. Uh, the health packs, med kits. Um, uh, 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 gas mask filters um, and uh, any of the throwable items, you know, like the throwing knives, the distraction cans, small tubs, things like that. Um, the backpack is a little bit more limited in that there are certain things that you cannot do. You can't uh, modify your armor out in the field um, and you can't craft ammunition for your main weapons. You can craft ammunition for the special weapons, so like the Tihar or uh, the crossbow that we showed uh, last year. Um, those Weapons use more simple uh, ammunition, and that's something you can craft out in the field. And so there's there's, there's uh, limited things you can do with it, but it allows you to kind of take this workbench with you, and uh, and and do certain things that are uh, you know critical to to gameplay in the moment whenever you need to. Um, the more significant things you have to find a workbench to to, to deal with, like cleaning your weapon, you have to do it at a workbench. Uh, I think some of it is, is you know the friendliness of a demo for a uh, for for a show like this, but um, there's there's definitely I mean the combat with creatures and humans has always had this level of realism and complexity to these systems that is maybe not always apparent. Um, there's also uh, you know we still have a lot of time to go with balancing things like that. It's a lot of the polish that uh, that we're going to be doing. Um, and uh, so if you've noticed something different like that, it might, you know, might be that, but rest assured, um, we're, we're taking things like difficulty and balance very, very seriously, especially for, you know, returning fans and, and, and new people to the series. Um, we want to provide, you know, a challenge for, for gamers of all types, so. I think so, I think so, because there's still that, Eastern European feel to, to everything that uh, um, that is Metro. I mean, it, it's it's made by a primarily Eastern European team. Uh, we've diversified our team, uh, you know, more over over the course of developing this game. But um, you know, there, there, there's always been that that core feeling of you know. It takes place in, 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 Eastern, in, in Eastern Europe and it's a kind of a contrast to Western games that a lot of people around the world are, are more used to, where, where game development has, has been more prominent. Um, and uh, I don't think that that's gone away with, 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 with this one uh, at, at all. And it's kind of been a staple of the Metro series is the authenticity of it. Um, the authenticity of, you know, it's not a Western team making an Eastern game, it's a, you know, there, there's there's an authenticity on the development side that comes through in uh, um, in in the game at the end of the day in the experience. Yeah, yeah. The sound design this time around uh, is even more important than than it, than it ever has been. I mean, sound design is one of those things that is often overlooked um, because uh, when it's done right, you don't really notice it. You only really notice sound design when when it's not correct because it's something that you just kind of um, it, it it sits underneath the uh, the main experience and 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 makes it more realistic when it's done right. So we really really wanted to to push it this time around. Um, the weapons uh, were all recorded uh, um, out in you know out in out in the wilderness. Uh, we sent our uh, sound engineer out into uh, the forests around in, in Ukraine and he took. Uh, uh, binaural uh, microphone with him and he fired all these guns in all these different environments, uh, all these different surroundings. So did some really, really um, uh, in-depth recording with a lot of this stuff and we've enhanced the systems to uh, have, you know, the um, like 3D audio systems around in the environment so it really feels like you're, you're immersed in the sound and it's coming from particular directions and not just, you know, 
playing louder because it's coming from you know that side. So we, we've 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 really done a lot of work uh, behind the scenes to enhance uh, the audio this time around, and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna have an impact on 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 gameplay. And it's just gonna make everything feel a lot more realistic and a lot more visceral.